you know, as you interact with these customers, can you also, you know, talk a bit about, you know, based on the discussion you're having, you know, because the platform evolves, market is changing, uh, which will also kind of define or dictate the evolution of any nine, you know, services and offering that you folks have. So talk about that. That's a good question. The conversations with clients has changed. Um, this um, today, you know, Talking to a Cloud Foundry customer a few years ago, they, they believed Cloud Foundry is going to be the centerpiece of their cloud strategy. Now, with that assumption going away, knowing that there are definitely things running alongside Cloud Foundry and that there are environments where there is no Cloud Foundry at all, the question is, if, if you look at it, it, you know, hundreds of Kubernetes clusters with different extensions and different workloads, you know, these organizations, they need to consume certain services from external vendors, from infrastructure providers, but they're also consuming services uh, from their own, from, from, uh, from within their own organization. So there's a huge communication challenge in exchanging information about what the platform capabilities of the internal platform actually are. Uh, where to start looking into, let's say, a particular service offering, whether it's externally provided or internally, it doesn't matter. Um, as a consequence, because you know there, there has been this central marketplace in Cloud Foundry where you could have registered, you know, things, uh, you know, those services as uh, you know open service broker API compatible services. But um, you know, a single Kubernetes cluster doesn't provide anything like it. You could create CRDs and, and you know use the operator pattern to integrate uh, services, but it doesn't really help on the organization level uh, for let's say engineers uh, to pick what are the tools that we are allowed to use that, for example, also have been cross-checked with internal security. Because I mean, how can internal security still understand and ensure? that what engineers do is in compliance with the organization's requirements. And so one of the ideas is um, what we call any nice marketplace. It, it, it looks like a, a platform specific shopping cart, so to say, where you can register your products. Our products are preset, obviously. Um, products provided by major infrastructure providers can be loaded into that marketplace, but also customers can add their own uh, uh, services. This marketplace can be uh, branded with um, with their own uh, corporate identity, and then they can use this marketplace to tell their engineers individual departments in individual regions on which services have been cleared for them to use. So then you know there's a product called, let's say, Postgres, and it's uh, based on virtual machine automation. There's a bit of text on describing what it does. There's link to documentation, some videos to learn, and maybe a link also to provision it. So it's pretty much what you can find in the marketplace of the large vendors, except that it's an open system. It comes pre-populated with some of the modules that are already present in, in a platform that we you know, collaborate with, but it's open to for customers to be expanded to their particular needs. Because to this point, nearly every client starts creating something like that from scratch. And clients are very differently um, equipped with skills and, and knowledge and application developer teams who know how to build something like it. So I, we believe that's an opportunity to share with the community, something that, that we've built and something that um, you know that can become uh, maintained by the community over the longer term. Solving the problem on how to communicate what engineers are clear to use, you know, sharing best practices, sharing experience. That's the idea of of, of the NS marketplace because we've had this in nearly every platform account.